Hi, fellow believers in Christ. Today, I just wanted to remind you that there's nothing you can do to earn the love of God. Um, but there's a lot you can do to earn his friendship. So in churches today, we, we hear often that, that God loves us no matter what, whether we're the most evil um, Hitler or the greatest preacher who ever lived and who won the most souls. God loves both of those people the same. And it's because God is love. And that's, that is truth. That's very true. There's nothing you can do to earn God's love. So we all need to stop trying to earn his love because we're just, it's a lack of faith if we try to earn his love because it means that we can't believe that he, he is who he is. Who he is, is love. That's his character. That's, that's his identity, is love. So that's why there's nothing we can do to earn his love. There's nothing we can do to lose his love. He, he will always, well, as long as we're alive anyway, he's going to love us because um, he created us. And again, it's about him, not us. It's his character and his nature to love us no matter what. Even if we, you know, killed and mutilated and raped thousands of people um, and did other horrible things, unspeakable, um, God would still love us. So, um, and you can't win enough souls to love God because he already loves you before you do anything for him. And, but, but one thing they don't emphasize in church enough is we can't, we cannot influence God to love us, but we can influence God to be friends with us. He loves everybody, but he's only friends with a few. And so that's what I want to emphasize today is God wants to be, he wants you to be his friend. He's already your friend in many ways, but he wants you to be his friend. That's what he really longs for with us is friendship um, because his love will never fail. The question is our, our love, because our love does fail a lot. And um, Jesus told us that unless we obey his commands, we do not love him. In John 15, 14, he also said, unless you obey my commands, you're not my friend. He says, ye are my friends if ye may do whatever I command you, not just some of the things I command you, but whatever I command you. And that, that means everything. So in order to be a friend of Jesus Christ, um, you have to obey everything he tells you to do, not 90%, but all of it. And that's how you become a friend of Jesus Christ. So again, Jesus loves everybody, but he's only friends with a select few. You know, in the Bible, it also says many are called, but few are chosen. When the Bible says many, it really means everyone is called. Because if you search the scriptures, you will see that every human who ever lived and who is ever going to live has been called by the Lord to serve the Lord, to obey the Lord, and to be a disciple of the Lord. Because it's God's will that all of us go to heaven. The Bible also says that it is, it is against God's will for anybody to perish. Um, but billions have already perished and are already in hell because of their own choice. But that's not God's will. God's will is that we follow him and go to heaven forever. Um, so he wants to be friends with us. He already loves us. But what he really wants is to be friends with us. So that meaning that we're his friend so that we can be chosen. Few are chosen. And the, these chosen ones are people who are chosen as his friends. And those are the ones who um, will go to heaven. So you can't do that by willpower. You can only be the friend of Jesus by faith because it's impossible to obey Jesus except through faith. You can't obey him in your flesh. It's, it'll never happen in a million years because your flesh is a rebel. Your flesh always wants to sin. So the only way to obey Jesus is through faith. And, you, and he says, whatever I command, meaning anything I command, which also means all that I command. 
So um, the, the, the thing that we should be striving here for is not the love of God, because we already had that. The, even when we were in the womb, God loved us and he'll never stop. So that is not anything to strive for. But we should be striving to be considered his friend. In John 15, 15, it says, Jesus says this to his disciples. No more do I call you servants, because the servant hath not known what his Lord doth. And you I have called friends, because all things that I heard from the Father I did make known to you. So if Jesus is talking to you about all things, that's a clue that you're his friend. And he, he really wants to be our friend. You know, he really does. Uh, but in order to hear what Jesus is saying, of course, we have to listen. We have to, um, you know, we're not going to hear if we're if we're not listening. Um, so we, we have to, there's an active role that we play in it. In James 2.23, and fulfilled was the writing that is saying, and Abraham did believe God and it was reckoned to him to righteousness a friend of God, he was called. Now, Abraham believed with all his heart that the Lord would fulfill his promises that he gave Abraham, that from Abraham, his seed would come a great, great nation, and ultimately the Messiah would come from Abraham. So Abraham never stopped believing that promise. And because he believed the Lord, no matter what, even to the point of offering his son on as a sacrifice, because he almost did, because he believed that God would raise his son from the dead. Because of that, Abraham was a righteous man. So when we believe the Lord, that makes us righteous. When we act, on, when, when you truly believe the Lord, you're going to act on that faith. You're not going to be without acts, you're going to be doing, you're going to be acting on the faith. Anybody who doesn't obey God doesn't really believe God because God said that if we are rebels, we will go to hell. So people who disobey God really don't believe that that they're going to hell. Otherwise they, they would repent. You have to actually believe what the Lord said in order to have a motivation to repent. You have to believe that it's very true that if you're a rebel, you'll go to hell. If you don't believe that, you won't have a motivation to repent and you'll just keep sinning. So, but when we believe in the Lord, that's what makes us righteous is our, is our faith. And when you have faith, you act on it. So Abraham acted on his faith because he took his son to the altar to sacrifice his son and he was going to do it um, until the Lord stopped him. He was absolutely going to do it because he really believed that God was going to raise his son from the dead and that God would keep his promise. That, that his son uh, would have a great nation come out of him. So it says, and a friend of God, he, Abraham, was called. So when you're righteous, you, you become a friend of God. You become righteous through faith, okay? That's believing and acting on what you believe. And the faith must be in what God said. It says right here, and fulfilled, uh, Abraham did believe God. And it was reckoned to him to righteousness. So your faith has to be in God and what he says. So this is another clue of how to be a friend to God. If you're a friend, you obey all the commands of God. You listen to what God says. And you believe everything that God says. In James 4.4, 4, we see who is not a friend of the, of the, of the Lord. Adulterers and adulteresses, have ye not known that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoever then may counsel to be a friend of the world, an enemy of God, he is set. So what James 4.4 is telling us is that if you're a friend of the world, it's impossible for you to also be a friend of God. So here's all the clues about how to be a friend of God. Number one, you obey every command that comes from the Lord to you. You listen to everything that the Lord says. Okay. You believe everything that the Lord says and you act on it. And then in James 4, 4, you are not a friend of the world, meaning you don't covet and crave all that the world has to offer. If there's things in the world um, that you want 
then that's a, a red flag to your spirit that there's something wrong with your relationship with the Lord. And I have to battle this all the time because there are things in the world that I want that my flesh wants. So I always have to constantly be crucifying my flesh because if I allow my flesh to resurrect itself, I'm going to want to be a friend of the world because that's what the flesh does. That's what it is. So it is a battle. It's a spiritual battle. And um, um, it affects all of us, you know, because my flesh wants to be friends with the world just like anybody else's flesh does. You know, I'm no different. But but when the, my flesh is crucified, which it needs to be all the time, then I can be a friend of God and I can listen to him. I can obey him. I can believe everything he said and act on that belief. So anyway, um, God loves you very, very much. He wants you to be his friend. His love for you will never fail. It's, it's, it's already in the bag. You don't have to worry if God loves you. It's in the bag. It was in the bag when you were in the womb. He loved you. And his, his love won't end as long as you're alive. You know, his love won't end. Um, so, um, but there is wrath and destruction for people who on judgment day don't go to heaven. And those people are going to be the people who are not his friends. So, you know, in the, in the parables, when Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. Um, those are the people who Jesus was not friends with, because when you're friends with somebody, you know, the person. You know, now Jesus knows all about us, but he wants to know us intimately as a friend. And that's different than knowing all about us. Jesus knows everything you've done, every thought you've ever had. He knows where you're headed in life. He knows where you've been. He knows where you've come from. He knows all the wounds that you've suffered, all the pain, all the wounds that you've inflicted on yourself and inflicted on others. He knows it all. But what he wants to know is you in an intimate way as his friend. That's what he wants to know is, is that he wants to have memories and experiences as a friend with you. So that's what he longs for. Yes, he knows everything. But when he says, depart from me, I never knew you. What he means is you and I were never friends. You and I never walked together. I knew everything about you, but you never walked with me. You never fellowshiped with me. We didn't have a relationship. And that's what Jesus is talking about. And that's what all these verses here are talking about in James and John. So um, I just hope that you will endeavor every day of your life and myself as well to make ourselves friends of the Lord. And um, so that we can be the few that are chosen, you know, on judgment day. And um, God bless you. I love you. <laughs>